This is Don't Panic, episode number 290, recorded October 19th, 2020. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and it's got to be you. I'm Sean Jennings, joined by a couple of guys uh, who just partied all weekend long. You guys must be so hungover. It's Colby Rabinu and Dan Miller. What's up? Party people. Hi. Just the enthusiasm is overwhelming. Why we do this show at 10 p.m. on a Monday, I'll never know. But, um, it, well, it is a bit of an accident of history, right? It, it, it was Colby's West Coast journey that really did it more than anything else. Because I, right. I think the right. very first set of episodes, we weren't as late. And I think it was that. Right. Someone yeah, because the, be the time difference is what necessitated the, the 10 p.m. recording uh, I don't know why we picked Monday, slot. though. Yeah, that I don't remember. Too long I mean, what else do you have to do on Monday? I, You know, well, back in those days, we had nothing to do. Now we still have nothing to do. Um, <laughs> but that's, Now we have even less to do. Somehow, as if that's even possible. Um, so, gentlemen, what's, uh, what's going on here mid-October? <laughs> as if that's uh, a thing. What's going on? Um... Oh yeah, I turned thirty. That happens. Whoa! Yeah, I think you were only twelve when we started the show. <laughs> <laughs> On my way back home, I accidentally popped the three in my three and zero <clears throat> balloon. So now I just have a big zero hanging in my <laughs> living room. Hopefully, that's not predictive. Lots of binary jokes to be made. Lots of yeah, uh, Benjamin Button jokes to be made. Um. I don't know. What else is going on? Well, let me ask you a question, Dan. I had a bit of, uh, of an interesting situation this weekend. I had my first sort of, maybe this is embarrassing to say, I don't know, you tell me. I had my first uh, social uh, social gathering of like a dozen or so people that I had been to since quarantine started. Uh-huh. Uh, um, my sister-in-law's friends from New York City actually came up. They, they went pumpkin picking and they carved some pumpkins. It was a whole thing they did. And then they invited me to come hang out. I showed up wearing a mask. None of them were wearing masks. I felt uncomfortable about wearing a mask. I wore it for like maybe 40 minutes. And then I took it off and I felt really uncomfortable about it. And I didn't know if yeah. that was like, should I have kept it on? Is it, should I have just gotten over it? I don't, I don't know. It was my first time doing that. And it was a really sort of odd, uncomfortable situation. Yeah, that's a, I'm a little bit surprised by that, but also not surprised. Like, there are still lots of people I know. I know of people. Okay, well, that's I good. See you. I see you on Instagram, people. If any of you people <laughs> listening to this. That, like, when they leave New York, for whatever reason, they're like, oh, like, now I don't have to wear a mask. Well, their argument and to me... like, but wait a second. Their argument to me was... We're from New York. If we would have gotten it, we would have gotten it already, which did not fly with me. Which did no. not. No, 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 no. No, even I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I think the most optimistic yeah. numbers say that like maybe 20% of New York has had it. And none of these people, like, at least they don't, they could have had it, but they don't think they did. So, right. It, yeah. So that that's my view is that there's there's been a lot of like, late summer uh, into autumn like new york escapism like oh like now we're not in new york so we don't have to do this this is just a new york thing right uh that doesn't hold water yeah. but as to what you should have done i mean i would have felt this i would have felt just as awkward i would oh, have me felt too. Like, tons of pressure yeah uh, but i have also been one to call people out on their bullshit as <laughs> someone who who sat here, and and I this is where I I start to like lose my empathy for these people. It's like wait a second, like you live in New York, weren't you also sitting in your room for like two and a half months, just <laughs> right. listening to sirens all day long? Yep. Uh, what ha like what what was going through your mind while that was happening, and like how do you reflect back on that time now? Well, uh, I, I think it's one of those things where, 
And I've fallen prey to this is when you're around family or friends, it feels different than being at the supermarket or being in a public place where there's just a false sense of I, I um, my literally a false sense of security. Well, my father and his significant other both got COVID at separate times. I was actually at a party while she was positive and active with COVID. And that's I had to go get tested afterwards and stuff. But there was a bunch. My 92 year old grandmother was there, and none of us were wearing masks. We all assumed we were family, and and thankfully everybody ended up okay. But it's just one of those things you put down these defenses, and it goes, oh, we're all friends. We all know each other. We can't give each other. And it is just, it is just like a weird psychological thing where it's like, oh my god, I never leave my car without putting it on, but I go to my brother's house and I just don't wear one. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's okay if you all agree to it. Well, I would never assume that I would never I would never walk into a room where other people are and not wear a mask. I might raise the question later on, like, hey, like we're all like somewhat we all made this agreement together that we're going to do this. So, like, if you want to do this, too, that that's cool. Otherwise, like, I don't see it. I would be I would never force someone to, like not wear a mask because i think if you if you are all not wearing masks right and then you walk into some social situation there's someone who is it's really rude to uh continue to not wear it because you're applying so much pressure to that that's like unfair in yeah. my well they, right. they they did the little like um my sister-in-law came up to me and she kind of like was whispering it was like you know sean it's okay if you don't want to wear your mask and i was like uh, it's like, it's okay if you do want to wear your well, mask. Well, that's what, and it's but that again, would that would have been yeah, like that would have been a more comforting thing to hear, right? And I, I I you know it's it's a lot different when everyone's wearing a mask and you're the one not, you know, in the sort of reverse of the yeah. situation. Um, but I think when you're the one with a mask, it's it's tough. Of course, then we spent most of the time. My brother has a bar in his basement, so all standing very close to one another around a bar in a basement without windows or ventilation. So. I'm probably going to be fine. <laughs> but we had a fun time. It was a great time. We had a charcuterie board and everything. Yeah. They put on a mean party. Yeah. That's yeah. that sounds I'm very uncomfortable. Speaking of like pumpkin and apple. I wonder if like the pumpkin picking, apple picking, strawberry picking people are doing more business than they were last year. Uh according it's like one of the safer things you could do. Yeah, according to my brother, they went to, uh, in Munson, a Munson, Mass., a, a winery slash pumpkin patch. Um, and they said it was very busy uh, and they were doing a good business. Yeah, I think I think they are, especially if you have kids. I mean, it's just one of those rare activities you can sort of get outside and do. Um, I would think it would be pretty popular. Yeah. With Halloween being canceled in many cities. Um, oh, yeah. Bummer. Yeah, this was the big... Matt and I, uh, on Up for Debate this past week, we did a Halloween episode. One of the few things we've ever disagreed on is whether or not <laughs> trick-or-treating should be allowed this year. Oh, yeah, I'm actually just thinking about that. It's kind of an interesting question. Because, it's... like skiing, uh, it's one of the few things that it was socially acceptable to wear a mask doing yet last year. <laughs> but, also so... to be... Also, to be fair, though, I don't think those plastic rubber Halloween ween masks were N95 certified. Oh, no. <laughs> or maybe they were. I don't know. And we just are fools. Should have been wearing those all this time. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, well, and I think there's like, I don't know if you've seen that that article. I won't be or graphic. I won't be able to find it. But there's a difference between N95 and the surgical mask. And it's like a cloth mask. Right. And then actually like, the bandana is one of the worst ones for some reason. Like, <laughs> it turns plastic into, like, face shields that are basically useless. Yeah. Well, at least uh, I, if I remember correctly, the bandana is just like a regular old bandana actually act as like what like a shotgun might do. Where it like, <laughs> amplifies the, the aerosol. Uh, Scatter. So there's hard to gross. But I, I think the nice thing if I'm being, well, I don't know. But, like, I wonder if no one knew that you were wearing a mask. I think about this. No one knew, could know if you were wearing a mask forever. It's like, imagine we live in some like, weird alien society where we all have to wear 
helmets or something, no one can see what's actually on her face. Would more people wear masks or would less people wear masks? Like, which would win out? The, the social pressure that some people feel like, oh, I'm wearing a mask to look cool. I don't want to see someone great. Or would then with the social pressure, wear a mask less effective because people could see it, couldn't tell if you were or not. <laughs> you want to take this one first, Colby? Well, Din, I think your mic is like incorrectly aligned because the th- you keep get- coming in and out of no. of your sound. Sorry, and then, I'm used to this. Could you um? What was the original premise? There were oh, aliens. I think, let, let me let me if I may <laughs> summarize it. Uh, if there was a way that imagine all our faces were concealed in a way where we have all face blindness and we couldn't see each other's faces. And so we didn't know whether or not people were wearing masks. Do you think it would make people more likely or less likely to wear them? Thank you, Sean. You're welcome. I think more likely because I think half of it is exactly what you experienced, Sean, which is like you like I feel like it's a very people thing to do. Like you want to do the thing that like everyone else is doing. You don't want to feel like a weirdo like wearing a mask when no one else is. And I, I feel like that is that plays out like all over the place. Like in my neighborhood, most people wear masks, but I was talking about this with some coworkers and one of them lives like literally a mile away across the river. And like there he gets like harassed for wearing a mask on the street. Like people like yell at him like when he's going to the grocery store. And so no, no one in that neighborhood wears a mask. Cause like, obviously if you're getting harassed on the street for wearing a mask, I probably wouldn't either. I just, I don't think I would leave my house, but Mm -hmm. Um, you need some of that face blindness. Yeah, yeah. And then I feel like the other thing is like a, I don't know, like it seems like it's just like a, I, I feel like it's a, it's a like macho thing. Like it makes you feel like you're weak or so. Like I don't understand. I, I guess I just don't understand. I don't understand what the big deal is. But like, it's like, it is it, does it make you look cool to, cool and dangerous to not wear a mask no i think you should look like a huge asshole but i I, you know i I think dan i actually i'm going to go the complete opposite direction i think in the face blindness hypothetical i think less people would wear masks and not more because i think i think and it's very unfortunate to say it this way but americans have a certain perspective on the world we've been it's been still from us from day one that our freedoms are the things we hold most dear that's what the sort of anti-mask crowd is mostly about not necessarily the aesthetics of it but it's the freedom to not wear a mask and i think it's also the fact that we have such short attention spans people are already tired of covid people are already flouting it's like these parties that i'm talking about it's like because people are just it's not because they don't want to wear a mask it's just because they just have gotten over the danger of it especially if you're not immunocompromised or a senior citizen or a baby. So I think less people would actually wear it because the reason you wear a mask partly is to keep yourself safe, but it's more to keep everyone else safe. And I think people are so individualistic and I hate to use the word, but selfish to a degree that I think people would just say, I'll just take the risk. I'm not going to wear the mask. It's a hassle. I, you know, it's my right. I'm not going to wear it. And I do think it, I do think it would be less. Yeah. I, I also think that people like that was not the first thing they said about masks, right? Like right at the beginning, it was not like put on a mask because it's it like protects other people from your germs, right. right? Like that was not well explained. And I don't think anyone listens past the first thing they hear about a thing, right? So the first thing they heard was like, don't wear a mask because we need them for, you know, whatever medical people. And like, that was it. <laughs> And I mean, but. I'll tell you, I go to an office every single day where the policy is you are to wear a mask, except when you are eating or when you're not in the office. Like if you're in the office, you're wearing a mask, period. Or you have a private office with a closed door and you're the only one in it. It's still a struggle to get people to wear masks and they will get fired if they don't. Like that's how hard it is to get. And it's again, not because they're like rude or an asshole or stubborn. It's just because it's inconvenient and you take it off to take a sip of your coffee and you just don't put it back on and it's it it is just one of those things unfortunately yeah but thankfully we don't all have face blindness so we can see all of our beautiful (laughs) hidden face i'm not shaving as much which is a real treat um i i did finally because now that and this is 100 percent true now that my my face is covered from my nose down everyone now notices my horrible horrible 
bags under my eyes and like the dark <laughs> spots under my eyes. If if I had a dollar for every time everyone asked me if I was okay or if I was sick, uh, I would be a rich man. So I finally ordered some eye cream. So I'll let you know how it goes when it gets here. Because like, because literally that's all you see now is my eyes. And people yeah. are like, God, Sean, you don't look good today. I'm like, first of all, that's oh, kind that's of a rude terrible. thing to say. <laughs> and second of all, no, I don't feel good. Thank you for asking. That's why I have these giant bags under my eyes. Uh, uh. But anyway, things are going great. Uh, everything every just god couldn't be better um <laughs> gentlemen remind me to tell you guys about the ten thousand dollars in extra work they found in my house uh during construction but we don't have time for that because we have got a p p l e the fresh fruit coming at you right off the tree apple news of course they did the announcement on tuesday so we're a day late and a dollar short but it's not gonna stop us stop us from giving our opinions as usual uh, let's go through last week's iPhone and HomePod event, break down every announcement, and maybe hear what people ordered. Uh, I even ordered a new Apple product. Ooh. It's surprising, yes. Um, let's break it down here, the seven biggest announcements. We usually do these um, in the order in which they were in the event, so why don't we do it that way? Really only two items. I mean, we talked last week about what we were expecting from the event. We did not get the new headphones. We did not get AirTags. Mm. I mean, this was short, sweet, and... To the point, uh, they weren't fooling. I know. Around. I was, I was disappointed. I wanted either the headphones or the AirPods or the the AirTags. I, as far as I'm concerned, if Apple does an hour long announcement every month with stuff, like I'm kind of okay with that if they want to spread it out. You know what I mean? Because they used to do like two hour long announcements that took forever and had a million products. So I think it does make sense if they're going to pre-record them and they don't have to fly out a bunch of journalists to their headquarters mm -hmm. to space them out. Um, and I would think if they're doing headphones, they've got to have them out before the holidays, right? I, I did don't like... think they're going to do headphones now or yeah. air tags. That's mm -hmm. my read. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why I did would like not the announce shorter that stuff event. with that? Like, those things go with iPhones. They don't go with ARM Max. Like... No, I, I, I totally agree with you. It doesn't make sense. And frankly, if you're going to, headphones are such like a back to school August announcement than it is an October yeah. announcement. Um, so it is a little, it is a little strange. So now should should I just pony up for I I some of my uh uh tiles have expired. Should I just pony up and get and and refill my tiles? I mean there there's so much evidence. It's got to be something they're working on. So either it, it goes the we, route We of had the images in the OS, right? Like yes. <laughs> wasn't that a thing? Yes. All signs point to but again, it was the same with uh air power, right? Yeah. And 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 they That's they announced true. a design and the never so it's entirely possible they never release it but it's got to be I don't know I don't know it's a tough one um, we certainly can talk about what they did announce starting with the HomePod Mini I know everyone raise your hand if you have a HomePod at home I think all of America just raised their hand well now you can get a <laughs> new smaller one the ninety nine dollar HomePod Mini uh, it still features a mesh fabric exterior. Uh, in both black and white, along with a small display on top to show the Siri colors and volume controls. Um, it's got one main driver, two passive radiators, and an acoustic waveguide at the bottom. It's got the Apple S5 chip. Um, multiple HomePod mini speakers can play music in sync and intelligently create stereo pairing when placed in the same room. It's also using the U1 chip that it debuted last year to create a better handoff experience that's coming in an iOS update later this year. Um... Third-party music services are being added to the HomePod, Pandora, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio, but no Spotify, interestingly enough. Um, they also debuted a new intercom feature that allows for folks with multiple HomePod devices to communicate between those. They'll also appear on connected iPhones, iPods, and Apple Watches. Um, the original HomePod, uh, still available, um, that you can purchase. Uh, yeah. Am I the only one that's excited about this? Mm-hmm. Wait, what'd you say, Colby? <laughs> I said, am I the only one that's excited about this? I would be excited about it if we didn't have Alexas. Chuck, is Amazon listening? <laughs> I don't They're think it did. I don't think it did. I, I actually... <laughs> I, I haven't had any of these things until until I moved here. Mm. <clears throat> There's some pre-existing uh, tubed ladies here. Uh, 
And I still don't really use them because in my experience, you, I still use my phone. Like if I'm going to check the weather, I use my phone to check the weather because it's so nice to consume it visually, right? Like I don't care about what the time, it, what the temperature is now. I don't care about what the high and low will be. Like what's the temperature now? What will the temperature be while I'm out? Right? Like, will it rain? Like, all these questions, it seems like the smart assistants still aren't super smart uh, in that way. Uh, and I, I think when we get to things that are more conversational, like we, can, we actually have a conversation and that these things keep context, that'll be better. And then the same thing with the smart home stuff. I'm told that the, uh, the Amazonian lady in the tube is much faster than Siri. And Siri is slow for the smart home. Which is crazy because the HomeKit app is so fast. Like, if you open the HomeKit app and you press a light, that light is instantly on. Um, here, I can do it right now. But when you tell Siri to do it, it takes forever. Off. On. Whoa. Whoa. On. Whoa, he's turning his light on and off. How are you doing oh. that? Whereas if I go, hey, Siri, turn off the bedroom light. Oh. I think I fell asleep it, during that. It, it took, took forever. forever. Why? Yeah. Siri, Why? Siri is, is just so... I mean, my number one Amazon smart feature is routines, where you can actually... I have a morning routine, routine every day where it says good morning, it tells me the weather, plays me the local news, plays me the national news, all while I'm lying in bed. It, it's the, it's the custom, customizability, the programming ability, and the wide interactions that make it so much better than this device but colby i will give you permission to be excited about this on one aspect can i tell you the aspect that i'm excited about i think about? we're on the same page but is it is it other than the than the wireless protocol it runs on other oh well, yeah it's other than that yeah <laughs> oh right it's, it's 5g from last week we're on the same page yeah. colby but you go ahead and you explain yeah i'm like, excited I'm almost exclusively excited about this for the handoff thing. Like, I want to be able to boot my phone on my little dingus. I'm on the, the tube lady and, like, have her, like, play stuff. The, like, that's... So explain that to me. Because this is something that the big HomePod doesn't have. Is that right? Because it doesn't have the one chip? I assume so. That makes sense. I don't know. I don't have a big HomePod. Um, I didn't but, like, watch the event. I only read the... Uh, the write-up so is there like a demo of like you you touch the thing to the device and then it it it'll play your spotify or your podcast or whatever was happening you can essentially walk up to it and it'll boop on your phone and say oh and then you can just kind of hand it off to you know you just say play on and it just you just can just sort of automatically oh it prompts you something it went by very quickly in the live stream yeah it wasn't it wasn't super explicit about what what was happening but i guess the idea is like instead of using i guess bluetooth range or something you know where it's not or you have multiple bluetooth devices because you're so close to it um mm -hmm. it can detect uh, much more quickly and accurately is my guess yeah and that's like i do well now that i work at home, at home exclusively i i do enough like moving between rooms like that that sounds nice to me like during the day and like i have a couple of sonoses now but like one of my sonoses is an old sonos so you can't airplay to it so i have to like airplay to the other one and then like pair make sure they're grouped and they're never grouped because once the tv um and it's just like kind of inconvenient i want that to be better just want to bring my podcasts into the kitchen and have them follow me yeah. So yeah. what's the interaction that you would, if you were designing this, what would be your ideal interaction? I like literally just want, well, I think I just want to like tap my phone on it and have it do that. Or like if it just followed me, that would be even better. Like if I just had my phone and it just like I went into the kitchen, so it like switched to the kitchen that would be super cool. Or if I got like close enough to the kitchen, so it automatically came on. Right. Cause it doesn't seem like it would be booping. Cause you don't need the Wii U one chip for that. That would just be the NFC stuff. Right. So I, I'm just curious what the UI is like. Yeah. That's, that's uh, I don't know. 
I don't know. Also, I could imagine like interesting things like having these around plus shortcuts. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if you can trigger like you can trigger shortcuts when your phone connects to like different Bluetooth things. It'd be cool if you could trigger. Imagine you can trigger a shortcut when you get near to your 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 uh, HomePod. Well, and, and that was an article I I read in prep for today's show was you know is the HomePod a, a, the secret HomeKit device, um, home item of the future that will enable a lot of experiences down the road uh, at a ninety nine dollar price point, much more approachable than the old HomePod. Yeah, yeah, and like I think. I don't know. I don't have, I don't use a tube lady. So I would, I, I feel like my plan right now, I'm going to get one of the one, one of these when, when the thing happens um, and I'll put it in the kitchen and I'll probably use it for timers unless it's really, truly terrible. And then I won't use it at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to take the home pod challenge, I guess is the point. Yeah. Oh, exciting. I, you know, I, I think for me, you got to sell us on audio. Like, like if Apple comes out and says, look, this is the best speaker you can get in the home. Also, it's got smart home stuff, but really it's all about the sound. I think that's a selling, if you try and sell this on the smarts of it, it's not there yet. But it's, I will say, I think this is maybe my favorite looking speaker. It looks really nice. And they claim to do really good stuff with the audio and the, you know, being able to adjust to your home automatically. And now the multiple home pods intelligently creating stereo pairing, which I think is really interesting. Um, You know, I think the other thing they're missing is, is I would love to see them more integrated with iOS and the app store and kind of create unique experiences. App developers can reach into like an overcast, for example, um, where you can right now, I can't ask my lady in a tube to play a podcast off of overcast. Right. But because it's already in the Apple ecosystem, if they could better integrate those things, um, I, I would be curious um, if that would help. But I, I don't think it's a bad device. I think it's much smarter than a three hundred and fifty dollar big version. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, yeah, think about I'm it. You can buy about... three of these for that. The uh, if I had a bigger house with more than, let's be honest, two rooms. Uh, I would totally be in the market for one of the big home pods because it's like the best speaker, like one of the best speakers you can get under five hundred dollars, and that's appealing. Like I like music, but I have like the the sound system in the room of the TV, and then there's just the bedroom. <laughs> so, <Right>. so <laughs> well, I will say, with. I've and to be honest, you can hear the music from the bedroom if it's playing in the living room anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've played, I unfortunately am embarrassed to admit I own a couple of a lady in the tubes and I have run multi-room, you can run multi-room audio with Amazon, which is painful and doesn't really work well. But when it does work, it's very cool having the exact same thing playing in multiple rooms. If anyone with Sonos kind of knows the same idea. Yeah, um, right. And again, if Apple can create a really seamless experience to get your iPhone to do it without any sort of leaps and bounds, like you said, Colby, it either follows you room to room or it's louder in the room you're in and softer in the other rooms. Right. They could do cool things. The issue is they have to sell a ton of these for any of these experiences to work. Yeah. That's a, and that's the thing. Like the Sonos, the Sonos work great. Like they work really great, but they're not, they're not super well integrated. Like, you can do everything through the Sonos app, but like the Sonos app is okay and mm-hmm. it's like fine. And it's like convenient if you play stuff through the Sonos app, but it's like less convenient if you play things any other way. Um, and like they kind of work with air airplay, but yeah. So that's, that's what I'm like. Like if they, if, if they can do the thing with this, the Apple thing where like, all the stuff like works really well together, you know, like being able to copy and paste things from your phone to your computer without doing anything. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like if we can have that sort of thing, I'd be, uh, I'd be thrilled. <laughs> you sound, uh, no, that's great. <laughs> thrilled. Oh, I'm glad, glad Colby is taking the home pod challenge. Uh, I'll we'll have to follow up when you purchase that, um, and see how it goes. Uh, all right, guys, now let's get into the real meat and potatoes here of this announcement. That was a little bit of a Caesar salad to start us, but now we've got the iPhone, and we got new iPhones, folks. Let's start with the iPhone 12, uh, the, the phone right in the middle. Um, 
iPhone 12, what do we got? We've got two models, uh, a smaller one and a bigger one. What's new? A couple of things. Um, OLED screens, um, flat aluminum sides for a look that more closely matches the iPod Pro, the iPad Pro and the iPad Air. Um, it will be co uh, come in five different colors, black, white, blue, red, and green. Um, pre-order start, uh, started last week. Um, very similar to the iPhone 11, still the notch at the top, uh, but they say the bezels around the screen have been greatly reduced. Um, I was bummed that they did not have the Touch ID power button they put in the iPad Air, because I thought that would have been cool, but whatever. Um, the OLED screen now supports Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HLG, and they say the glass is coated with ceramic shield for better durability when dropped. Um, new A14 Bionic processor, it's faster than the old one. Um, we'll talk about 5G as a whole in a second. I'm going to keep moving on, though. Um, camera got an upgrade. It's better. Um, they are removing the charging brick from the box as well as the headphones, so you're aware. Um, comes in two sizes, the 6.112 uh, and the 5.4 Mini. Um, and we'll talk about MagSafe as well in a second because I think that kind of deserves its own discussion. But But of the things listed so far, what are we... Any of that sort of exciting? What do we think of the new look? I think the new look's cool. I like it on the iPads. Yeah, I, I think it'll big be fan nice of new look. Yeah, I think it's a. I think it's a. I think it's a good look. I want to see it in person. I don't like. We'll talk about the Pro in a second. I do not like the sort of stainless steel shininess of the Pro. I like the sort of matte band um, around. Us. I think the new blue color looks really nice as well. Yeah, I I'm also excited about the blue color. I got a blue color one. Well, let's say that. Good. I, I didn't get a blue color. Oh boy. Well, hang on. We we got to find out later what right. you bought because I'm curious. A lot of models to choose from. Um, yeah, I think it's a great looking device. I think the the screen being a little more edge to edge is great. I don't know if anyone really cares. It's got Dolby Vision and HDR10. Um, I don't even think most most people's TVs these days have that. Um. Yeah, I think the rest of it's any thought on them not including the charging brick or headphones in the in the package. No, not really. I Yeah, me either. <laughs> I I think this this topic has been beaten to death. Like I think it is just technically it is the right decision to make. I wish that there that you know Again, in the American society, it's hard not to think, well, how come I'm not seeing any benefit from this, even if there is some benefit <laughs> to the planet? Right. The world. Right. Um, okay, well, then let's let's move on to the interesting stuff. To, to well, what I would... Well, what? No, go ahead. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Say what you're going to say. I might interrupt again, though. 5G. Oh, no, let's talk about the small phone. Oh, you want to talk about the mini? Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about the mini. Uh, the mini uh, is smaller. Uh, it's got the 5.4-inch screen, uh, but it basically has the same specs as the full 12. Um, it'll be available at the same time starting at 729. Um, yeah, it otherwise has exactly the same specs as the 12. It does. Very interesting. So now if you look at... I'm going to try and pull up the entire iPhone lineup because it really is... There is a, a phone for every point... Pro, yeah price point out there because you start at the se at the lowest end yeah se for four hundred dollars yep which uh the size of that it's not it's still is touch id the last one would touch id um and the non end-to-end -end screen then you have yep. the 11 and xr 10r yep. are still available 10r 11 500 then 600 and then it's the 12 mini and full size 738.30. And then in the minute, we'll talk about iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max, which is the biggest iPhone screen they've ever made. So it's quite an incredible range. Confusing? Yeah, I, Maybe. If I was, if it was not COVID, I would have gotten the mini. Oh, But hmm. as it stands, portability is much less of a concern for me this year than it was last year because I hardly leave the house. Interesting. So, I considered like, the, the reasons I wanted to get I I would have last year gotten the small one is because it's easier to hold and it feels better in my pocket. Well, but now like the, I, 
the I'm mid- not walking around looking at a map with a huge phone, and I'm never putting it. Well, it's interesting because, you know, we, we kind of get confused with these screen sizes, and I like when they point it out because the actual physical dimensions of the mini device is about the same size as the iPhone SE. But you're actually Mm -hmm. getting a 4.7-inch screen on the SE because it's not edge-to-edge versus a 5.4 on the Mini. So for the same size device, you're getting a lot more screen. So it's kind of an interesting debate as to um, how much screen you you actually need. (laughs) But I think it's good. Hey, look, I've always said that they should offer a smaller... Because there are just some people who really like the smaller phone sizes. And you're right, Dan. It's easier to hold... Uh, smaller in the pocket, so I'm, I'm glad they're offering a full-featured iPhone at that size. Yeah. I I briefly considered getting the giant one for the same reason, because portability oh. was no, is, is not a huge issue right now. But well, it's not... One of each, right? The big one for at <laughs> home and the little one for on the go. There you go. Yeah, I didn't. Spoiler alert. Well, let's go ahead and uh, talk about 5G, which was probably, I think it would be safe to say, the sort of biggest aspect of the announcement. Someone did a, uh, a I, should, I was going to send it to you guys, I should have, a compilation where they just super cut every time they said 5G. Very funny, because um, they said it a lot. Um, Verizon was brought up on stage to announce um, that the new iPhones, all of them, uh, 12 mini, 12, 12 pro and 12 pro max are all 5g compatible, uh, with both the sub six gigahertz 5g, as well as millimeter wave 5g. What does that mean? Uh, well, they brought Verizon on stage, as I said, to announce the rollout of Verizon's nationwide 5g network in the sub, uh, five gigahertz, uh, sub six gigahertz 5g network. Now you may have seen AT&T, T-Mobile already saying they have 5g. They have a 5g which is the sub-6 gigahertz version. Um, And not to get too much into the technology of it, but it is technically 5G. It's just a slower version of 5G. What Verizon was touting and what the iPhone supports, and a lot of 5G phones don't support, uh, is the MM wave standard, which is above 6 gigahertz. That's when you get to the real ultra-fast 5G um, that Verizon is currently building out in select cities. This iPhone will support it. You can barely get it anywhere today. But, you know, so be it. And I still don't entirely understand the 5G stuff, but the the, the MM wave, is that what it was called, is much faster. Ultra wideband is the other sort of description they marketing Ultra speak wideband. they give it. Yeah. And that's... And, go ahead. Oh, but it's also not very long range, right? Like, I, I read a thing today that was like, like city, like you, you might cover one city block with it. With an, uh, one of these MM Wave towers. Yeah, so eventually, MM Wave, again, I don't think any of us are spectrum experts, but the way I understand it is your phone will always use some amount of both. Like, you're going to use the whole spectrum. It's just only half of it sort of turned on right now, and they're in, because the sub-6 gigahertz 5G can actually be turned on with the current towers. It's more of a software thing than a hardware thing. Mm. And that's, what, that's why Verizon can one day turn on a 5G nationwide network is they went and installed all the right software to expand the spectrum of the current towers. To go to MM Wave, you actually need new hardware. And that's what takes longer. And you're right, Dan, it is shorter wave. So there has to be more towers for it to be reached. And it is more designed to be in smaller areas, like more congestion in a smaller area versus long spread. And so when they say MM Wave is faster, it's a maximum faster but will everybody see the full benefits of MM Wave, especially in more rural areas? Probably not. Right. You know, MM okay. Wave, Verizon talks about things like stadiums and things like that are going to be where MM Wave's really going to see its advantages because it is that really condensed, as you mentioned, uh, populace. Yeah. Lots of people are going to be going to stadiums this year. Yeah, well, that's yeah. that's the funny thing is I'm guaranteed they did a whole marketing plan because they're like the official carrier of the NFL and stuff. I'm sure they did a whole <laughs> thing that got shot to hell. <laughs> Poor guys. Oh. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's Yeah, um, I'm not excited about 5G, but what I am excited about 5G for, and it's unclear, I don't... So... 
if I live in a Verizon service area mm-hmm. uh, that gets 5G access, but it's not it's not fancy 5G. Yep. It's just normal 5G. Like how what what kind of like download speeds are we talking about here? More importantly, what kind of upload speeds do you know? Uh, from from Apple's announcement, they claim with the s- sub 5G, you will get up to a gigabit. And with MM Wave, that goes to four gigabit. And what about upload? I don't think they said. Um, I will Google that while we're talking. Because um, if you can get good upload speeds on some kind of 5G, now Verizon or some other carrier that implements this starts to become a valid ISP competitor. Oh, yeah. People have already talked about calls. it. Right. But like download speeds, the thing I've learned from trying to work remotely from rural areas over the over the summer was uh download speed is not even half i would honestly trade good upload speeds in today's day and age for good downloads because there's nothing more frustrating than trying to be on a zoom call and i'm like it's like a non-starter you can't do any work at all yes there there is a a a Small but but Mighty. defined contingent of people who work in Maine at my at, at my job and like video calls with them are terrible. Yeah. In that you you can see them fifty percent of the time. But that would be cool. I would love to not have Comcast. I think that's the only way I'm ever going to not have Comcast. So actually, in cities, maybe the the super fast 5G could could really replace your ISP. Yeah, I think I got a I got a a marketing thing from T-Mobile uh, recently that was like that. It was like I don't know. They'll give you a box and it's your internet now. I don't know if it's 5G or fast. They didn't. They they were cagey about the. Oh, here's another question. Again, I didn't watch the video, so they probably covered this. But I heard that there was like a some sort of like League of Legends like demo with the five G stuff. Were they demoing that because it has better latency, like less lag? I think that was something they said. Well, I'm sorry. I I was genuinely googling five G speeds. What were you talking about? <laughs> They demoed that game. Was that were they demoing it? League of Legends. There's less lag on 5G. That's exactly the point they were making. Oh, that's nice. Now that's that's when you start to get to it. Like when you can use a cell tower to do things you couldn't before, like video, like video conferencing, like playing games that you care about latency. I care about that. Okay, I've gotten more excited about 5G from this uh, call. Well, and I will quickly, so I did get an answer. Um, This article from 2019 ran some real-world speed tests in the U.S. in July of 2019 and found on Verizon 5G a real-world download speed of 870 megabits, though it peaked at 2 gigabits, and an upload speed for Verizon Wireless at 50 megabits up. Um, And I'm trying to think of it, see if it has, it doesn't say what the peak was, uh, but it says it averaged that. That's all you need. No, that's, I, I mean, legitimately, I don't think if we can really maximize 5G, I don't think people realize it's going to be faster than the majority of Americans' home <laughs> internet connections. Yeah, that's that's 2x my upload speeds right well, now. And I pay extra money to get a fancy Comcast plan that has 25 megabits up. Cable is not a great way to transmit the internet. It's not. No. Uh, and that there's a reason why these companies are investing very heavily. That's why Dish bought all that spectrum to eventually build out their own 5G network because it's theoretically the future. Um, and someone's going to make a lot of money on it. So basically, um, sub 6 gigahertz 5G available in most places. Um, your results may vary. Uh, MM wave or ultra wideband um, in very select cities coming eventually. Uh, the other thing they did announce was a smart data mode, which uses LTE when your current activity doesn't demand 5G speeds in an effort to uh, save battery life, which I think is smart, because I think most of the time LTE is probably going to cover what you need. Yeah. 
Cool. LTE is mostly fine. Yeah, I was excited to hear that. I don't want to trade off battery life for 5G when I'm walking around because I don't need 5G when I'm walking around. Yep. Yep. I'm not, walking, I'm not walking around watching 4K movies or playing League <laughs> of Legends. Yes. Well, you know, Dan, speaking of 4K movies, why don't we talk about the Pro? Okay. The iPhone 12 Pro. Um, the upgraded version, the fancier version, it's got the stainless steel shiny band around it. Um, two versions, the Pro and the Pro Max, a 6.1 inch and a 6.7 inch. Uh, the biggest phone Apple has ever made, available in four colors, gray, stainless steel, gold, and a new blue. God, that blue is so sexy. Um, it's got the A14 Bionic chip. Um, it has 5G in the same way the other one does. The big thing is the cameras. That's always been the big differentiator. Um, a LiDAR sensor uh, as well, which will be used in low-light situations as well as AR applications. Um, it's got the same ceramic shield technology, uh, the triple camera system, uh, the wide, the telephoto, the ultra-wide lenses, but now with faster apertures. Um, there's also a new uh, telephoto lens that can optically zoom up to 2.5 uh, times, a new wide camera. The wide camera sensor is also larger, blah, 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 a bunch of numbers. Nobody really cares. Um, a new feature coming soon called Apple Pro Raw uh, that will offer the existing computational photography benefits like Deep Fusion and Smart HDR, along with the flexibility of raw photos, uh, which seemed pretty exciting for people who care about that. The new iPhone 12 Pro will also shoot in HDR, the first uh, for iPhone, and probably, I think the first for, they claimed anyway, the first for phones in general, including the support of shooting directly in Dolby Vision HDR, and you'll be able to edit Dolby Vision HDR right in the Photos app, which is kind of big if you care about something like that. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the big difference with the Pro. You know, I, I talked about when we previewed the Apple event, I said, I'm worried there's going to be too many phones and you're not going to be able to tell a difference between the different lines. I actually think they did a very good job of differentiating the Pro from the non-Pro, which is if you if you care about the cameras, you get the Pro, or you care about a bigger screen, you get the Pro. Otherwise, you get the regular. Because they are literally the same otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. That's true. I thought the... The like screen, they showed a slide at the end of the keynote that was like all of the phones that you can buy now. It did seem a little, a little bit crazy. There were a lot of phones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it does make sense. Like, I feel like the ones, the new ones all seem like they have a reason to exist, right? Like the mini's the small one, the giant one's the giant one. I mean, like, people do shoot legitimate things on these phones. I mean, they're not wrong to focus on the cameras as they become more and more accessible. Yeah. And shooting in Dolby Vision for somebody is a big deal. Um, but it is, right. it is this, this may be the one time they actually call a device pro, and I'm like, that actually is for pros. Like, you know. <laughs> right. Do I need that? You know, nobody, no, literally, if like you're just shooting like your kids playing on a swing set in Dolby HDR. <laughs> Like, you're kind of, that's really unnecessary. I would love to know what the file sizes are of something like that. If you're shooting, like, 4K HDR. <laughs> right. You should probably have a tripod if you're doing that. Well, no, you should have a whole cinematography crew if you're doing that. <laughs> Lighting. Isn't it the case that the, the HDR stuff is just extra metadata? Maybe it ends up being a lot of information. I guess it's per frame. Uh, I have an HDR Adobe Vision TV, so if I have it, probably lots of people have it. Oh, it's a very, it's, uh, no, it's an extreme, the Apple TV supports it. I mean, it's an Roku support. It's an extremely common standard. Uh, uh -huh. uh, how you would play it off of your iPhone to another device, I'm not sure. Yeah, does Can, the AirPlay support Dolby Vision? <laughs> I, I, I would think, right? <laughs> it's a good question. To your Apple yeah. TV, maybe, but to other devices, I don't know. And then what file format? It's got to be like an MKV, or do they have some proprietary? I don't know. Hmm. Like someone the other day accidentally emailed me a bunch of, what's the weird fo photo format they use? H-E-I-C? Oh, yeah. The, and, they, yeah. and I tried to open it on my Windows computer, and they just wouldn't open. 
And I'm like, this blows. <laughs> yeah. What was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, oh, and it's interesting that you can only get the big phone in the pro version. Is that yeah. not always the case? Well, it has always been the case, but now you can get the small version in the non non pro, but you can't get a small pro or a big non pro. Yeah, essentially mm. the 12 regular and the 12 pro, not max, is they're essentially the same size. Yeah. And did we talk about how the the cameras on the Pro Max are better again? Yes. I, okay. We didn't really get into details, but yes, they're very good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, w do you remember what was the first iPhone where we got the two different sizes? Oh, jeez. I mean, the even the the t even the the X had two sizes, didn't it? But does that go back to like I... the seven plus or the eight plus? We definitely had two sizes with the eights, and I think we had it before that. Uh, okay. I feel like it was the six that it was, because wasn't it the year that that they got round on the side? The six and the six. That was the first year there was the plus. The six and the six plus. Yeah. So that was the that was the beginning. So we went from then. What was that? Twenty fifteen. Twenty fourteen. 2014 to now we went from 2013 there was one phone and now seven years well, later there are no not necessarily because i mean you can go back the iphone 5 there was the 5 the 5s and the 5c right the 5c and the c and the s were released in the same at the same event in the same year that's right that's a good point so no they've been mixing it up for i you you probably have to go back to the four before you're really getting like a singular this is the phone. The phone. Um, yeah, that's fair. I just never considered getting the big phone because I always wanted the phone to be smaller well, until I, this year. But to me, like I said, I was shocked at how clear the delineation was because back to me, 10 really killed it. Where it was the 10, the 10R, and the 10S? Am I thinking of that? Where they had three at the same time and it was kind of hard to tell the difference a little bit? I think the when the 10 first came out, it was just the 10, and then it was the 10R or the 10S. Well, no, because the 10 came out the same time as the 8, remember? Because it was the 8, the yes. 8 Plus, and then the 10 was the big shiny phone. And yes. then they ha still had the X, the 10, but then they had the 10S. No, they had the 10S, the 10S Max, and the 10R. Ah, uh, the 10S Max, 10S Max. Oh, my God. <laughs> How soon we forget. But, like, to me, that was when it was really confusing. But this is like, look... You want the basic phone, it comes in two sizes. You want the fancy phone with the cameras, it comes in two sizes. Like, I don't know. I think that actually finally, to me, starts to make sense. Yeah. Um, now, one of the, sort of the one thing we have not yet talked about, MagSafe, um, yes. applies to the entire line. I want to say this to last because I think maybe it's the most exciting thing they announced. Depends on who you ask. Uh, it applies to the entire iPhone 12 line. MagSafe is back. Um, they basically put a big magnet in the back of your iPhone um, for two main reasons. One is charging. Uh, they've released a MagSafe charger that will attach uh, magnetically to the back of your phone and will actually charge it faster, I believe twice as fast as traditional um, non-MagSafe chargers because of whatever technology they have in it. Uh, but it's not just for charging. It's also for accessories like cases and other accessories. So Apple uh, announced a couple of cases that they will be rolling out as well as a um, wallet thing of a jig that sticks to the back of it and uses the magnets as well. They also announced, um, was it Belkin, um, had a charging dock that used MagSafe as well as a car dock that used MagSafe to sort of magnetize it up to your um, attachment. Uh, it's at 15 watts is what it charges it at. Uh, the MagSafe iPhone charger will be available for $39.99 uh, and will not come with the device. Um, yeah. Pop sockets. Have already announced they're they're in getting involved. Uh, it was Otterbox as well has already announced their MagSafe cases. Thank God. 
I never have to see someone s- s- gluing a pop socket to their phone ever again. <laughs> I, it's a game changer. I would go so Honestly, far as to say it's a game I would changer. use a pop socket then because I could always take it off when I'm not using it. That sounds great. Also, those like, I love those like super cheap like car mounts for your oh, yeah. for your phone where you like slide a little piece of metal into the case and then they like stick to the magnet. Mm-hmm. Now you don't need the piece of metal. And it, it charges mm-hmm. it right through the magnet. Even better. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the exciting thing for me is cases. I never have cases on my phone because I don't like them. But I, I'm intrigued by the idea of, like, just throwing a case on one day. But the issue with most cases, you kind of have to peel them on and off because they wrap around the front to stay on. But if they're held on by magnets, man, it's going to be real easy to just throw cases on and off of this thing. That's really interesting. <laughs> It's like That's changing a, a watch band or something. I wonder. So the only the, I really like the battery case. I've come to love the battery case. It's like it's like when you buy a computer and you just get the four terabyte hard drive, but for batteries, like you're just paying money. You never have to worry about battery ever again. Yep. Uh, you trade off bulk. Uh, but I wonder. Uh, I don't think they've announced battery cases for the new phones yet, or even the leather. Like the leather cases aren't out yet either. Right. I think. Um... The uh, they did say that leather would be coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're not at out. Right. Um, but I wonder for the battery cases for these phones, will it be the like the sides are kind of exposed deal, and it charges the the battery charges the phone via the MagSafe adapter instead of the like kind of lightning port pass through that the current ones do. That would be interesting, and then you. That port is just unencumbered. There's no, uh, you don't have to make it bulkier on the bottom. It might save a lot of space on the battery case. Well, what would be really, ne- I mean, again, I don't know what Lunatic would ever need this, but I think of that little um, wallet that they had that you could s- stick onto the back. You could have three or four little batteries that you just slam on there, uh-huh. and they're small, and they just provide a little bit of charge. But then you keep a handful of them and you only use them as you need them. I mean, that's that's the possibility you're opening when you can attach it via magnet and not via having to wrap your whole phone in it. Sean, you're brilliant. Uh, you know, I, 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 my life's dream has always been an iPhone accessories. Um, no, I, 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 I'm telling you, the one question I have about MagSafe is to what level will uh, accessory manufacturers have access to OS features via MagSafe? Is it data transfer enough where... This is one of those things where I am so excited for the stupid Kickstarters that are going to come out of people with the dumbest ideas. Oh, we're going to put like an LED heart that flashes on the back every time you get a tweet or something and it doesn't be a MagSafe. Like, I want all that stuff. That's so cool to me. Where it's like, and I'll just give you a simple example, which is CarPlay. I love CarPlay. Most cars don't have wireless CarPlay for some reason. So you have to plug it in every time. And I get that. If they made a MagSafe adapter that not only my phone stuck to magnetically and charged it, but also transmitted the CarPlay data and the car uh, port stayed plugged in via USB, that's a game changer. I mean, that's huge. So I'm just, I I wonder where that could go. I don't think they've built that in based on what I've read. Yeah, I don't think so either. Because I believe it's just... uh, Just charging. Well, there, there is... There's got to be some kind of data transfer, though, with smart charging and things. There's got to be some small amount, NFC or something, but I don't think... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm sure it's not like the lightning made for iPod protocol well, or whatever. But that's what I was thinking, because the, the smart connector that's on iPads. Like, I was like, oh, it's got to be something like that. But I guess that still requires some amount of physical, you know, contact-to-contact sort of non-wireless contact. So... I don't know. I don't know. That's that's my question. But I'm excited about this. And I, I am very excited to see what stupid things people are going to do with it. I mean, you could always make your accessory that connects to MagSafe, Bluetooth, or NFC. True. True. I mean, and that, that to me, even if it's just the simple idea of your phone knowing what you attach to it, even if it's not transferring data, like it knows the difference between a battery pack and a car charger and adjusts a cord, even that's like pretty valuable. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, then you could have then you could set up your iOS shortcuts for when I like attach my my phone to my car. 
Or when I when I put my pop socket on, I go into walking mode. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think I'm telling you, a year from now, we are going to have a don't panic contest where we buy each other the stupidest MagSafe accessory <laughs> we can find, and the other people have to use them. I love it. Yeah, so, I'm down. Exciting stuff. Now comes the point, guys, where I got to ask, what did you buy? What did you buy? Where'd you spend your hard-earned cash? I got... Well, I just did the... the fo- I've been doing the phone the phone upgrade thing, the Apple upgrade program. Um, I feel like if I was just buying a phone, I wouldn't have gotten a phone this year. I sure. would have stuck with my... Whatever. T- t- 11? That's the one we're on. Um, but I got the, the, the regular 12 pro, the regular Uh, 12 pro. Sorry. That's confusing. The 12 pro. Yes. In which color? I got silver. Cause I, I liked the shiny band. It's like white with like a silvery shiny out outside. I, I really, I assume I will probably get a case. I usually use a case and then I'll put it in the case and you won't be able to tell what color it is. But I did like, like I have the green one now. I liked the green. I would have gotten the green again. But alas, no green. Uh, I am the same as Colby, including the circumstances. Upgrade program, maybe wouldn't have gotten it, except I got the blue one, which I already revealed. <laughs> The the thing that said that I would have gotten the the mini, uh, probably if the cameras were exactly the same, I think I would have gotten the mini. But I I use I do take lots of photos. Hopefully, uh, at some point in twenty twenty one, I will be traveling somewhere and staying somewhere in an isolated cabin for a long period of time. <laughs> in which case, it would be nice to have. A, a better camera. You're gonna be Hopefully so busy be... writing your manifesto, they'll you'll never have time to. Yeah, my MagSafe accessory manifesto. <laughs> wow, well, that's hey, uh, good choices, good choices all around. I unfortunately uh, have a company-owned phone, which gets updated whenever they get around to it. Uh, <laughs> although I I still have the 10R and I still love it, and I still think it's a great phone, and I don't really feel a rush to upgrade. But I did say I bought something, guys. I finally got the iPod, uh, the AirPod Pro. Oh, nice. Many years too late, but my other ones officially died, and I got the AirPods Pro. So that was my... I could afford these. Have you received them yet? Yeah, they're right here. This is... Oh, oh yeah. Hold them. Yeah. I've had them for a couple days. So... How do you like it compared to the regular AirPods? You know, they're better than I thought they would be. I have a trouble with noise canceling. It gives me a headache. Mm-hmm. which oh, yeah, yeah. I know is true for some people. So I don't really use the noise canceling. I will say I don't like earbuds that go in my ears. I never have with the rubber. These I actually like. They're not bad. The number one complaint I have is I was a huge fan of the double tap to do things. And now that I have to squeeze the stick, it's way more awkward. I would much rather they include the, yeah, the I've, tap. I've never figured out how to squeeze the stick. Oh, well, I miss because it's like you're literally like, eh, th- and you just like you end up grabbing the wrong part of your ear. <laughs> it is weird. There's like a very particular orientation you have to squeeze from. Yep. I have, I have another iPhone question. If if anyone knows the answer, sure. And you, you both have provided such good answers tonight. Is there a difference these days between the phones? Like, if if I get, I mean, specifically, if I get a T-Mobile phone and then I want to use it on Verizon today, is it, like, it used to be that if you wanted to do that, you could only, it was data only. Mm-hmm. Is that still the case? Nope. Hasn't been for a few years. Okay, but awesome. They're 100% universal. That's amazing. Now, that is Thanks. one thing. You can't yet do dual SIM on 5G, should you have any interest in doing that. Not that you would. I don't even really remember what that is. That's just for people who, like, either have their phone domestically and sometimes throw an international SIM in there so they're running two at the same time, or maybe they have a work or a personal one and they use them on the same phone. Um, it's very – I don't think it's very common, at least not in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
This is great. I think we actually provided some some insight. Yeah. Um, we're we're over an hour, so you uh, we certainly can do picks, or we can hold them till next week, guys. How are we feeling? I'm fine to wait. Oh yeah, I think I have to go to bed. <laughs> I think that's that's very fair. Um, damn, Colby's pick is sexy this week. Uh, what a shame. We'll have to wait till next week. Yeah. Um, the suspense. The suspense. Well, hey, look, it was a great episode. Everyone, go out, pre-order your iPhones and your HomePods, and live the Apple dream like the rest of us. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, very quickly, because we are running out of time, very quickly I will mention on Up for Debate, where it's Spooktober, and I'm very excited because next week we will be talking about a film that I've never seen before, but one of the few horror films I've actually been wanting to see, which is The Witch. Um, or uh, this was th this was um, what, what year was this from? Uh, 2015, The Witch, uh, which is based in the uh, 1600s around witches in New England horror film. It's supposed to be very very good, um, very well regarded. So I'm excited to see that. We're going to be talking that 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 this week, and then the following week, we're going to be doing a movie I picked, and I'm jazzed. Child's Play. The Origin of Chucky, um, a very, very funny, odd horror movie that I'm excited about. So Spooktober's here. Check it out at upfordebate.tv. Um, but in regards to that, uh, don'tpanic.io is our website. It's a great website. You should go there, check it out. All the picks are there. Not this week, but for other weeks, uh, as well as the audio and the video. Of course, you can subscribe wherever you get podcasts. We're there, including on YouTube for the video. And you can reach us at Don't Panic Show on Twitter. Email us, don't panic show at gmail.com. We will be back next week with some non-Apple news. And whatever else is going on in the exciting world of tech. But until then, uh, I'm Sean. They're Colby and Dan. Uh, it's been our pleasure to have you here. We'll see you next time for another episode of Don't Panic. <laughs>